So uh, somebody who's doing really well will get to one crore of salary in what like seven eight years. Funds reached out to us mm-hmm. the moment they knew that we had exited Glitch. It's not about just generating wealth. It's about generating. all the parts that you should think about as well we wake up in the morning and say do we have full control of our day we are wealthy in every industry there's a ratio of how much the ceo gets paid relative to the entry level talent mm-hmm. right um, and there are industries which this is not so great manufacturing where the ceo gets paid versus an entry level shop floor worker gets paid yeah. really low and that Advertising is one of the places where the uh, equation does not look good. Mm. Like the CEOs are getting paid a few crores, yeah. uh, and entry level talent is getting paid like a few lakhs or sometimes even yes. lower, right? Mm. Yeah. Why is that so stark? Like it seems bizarre to me because when I'm talking to my cousins who are interested in this industry, I'm like, Are you sure you want to do this? You're getting paid this much. But then mm. when I meet a CEO in this industry, it's like, Wow, you're like making a lot of money. Yeah, you know that is. Um a question that requires its own podcast okay. and we discuss this as as people like you know as, as some as leaders in the creative industry um uh, unfortunately and that's unfortunate because i've been that entry level as well yeah. right is that the value of your input has actual value when you sit in a position or till the time you earn the stripes to have a seat at that table yeah right and it's for us even when we were not a large company at glitch for us to get a seat at the table required us to earn stripes yeah and our and the advertising creative industry works like that you may be uh, a junior copywriter and your copy may be the one that actually gets goes on the uh, you know yeah. as part of the holding but um you still the junior copywriter but you earn that stripe Yeah. Right. You earn. You've proven the fact that your copy works, and then you have equity. And people who actually have been able to use that equity well and grow, have have grown very quickly yeah. in the ad industry. So to counter what you've just said, that yes, there is disparity, but people who've been able to use those cards well have actually grown so quickly, and have have tripled their salary in a matter of few years yeah. because they've known how to use. that talent that equity and to get that seat at the table really really cool right. we actually had very little disparity i think the range we had was far more balanced over the years that glitch yeah by while, design yeah by design while we were running it for yeah. sure uh, that the just the way we uh the benchmarking was done was very different from what the industry was offering for example we had very very young people who were making a lot more than someone who had say 10 12 years of experience mm. and i know that they're still struggling with it because that's how that's the system we had set yeah. that was based on what you bring to the table and not the years of experience you have or um you know what potentially your background is your education qualification but you know you are allowed to do that or you are able to do that when you have full control sure unfortunately as we grow and as the need arises to you know to partner with other big companies to be able to get global scale etc you start using global compliance and you start using global mm. ways of functioning and then mm. yes that that does change so just curious like how much does an entry level person make and how does the salary sort of move up as you become ceo of a company you like know, in, in real numbers level, um my understanding would be that it starts at least at about 5 6 7 lakhs Lags, that would be yeah, entry okay. level like right out of college but i do know i remember uh signing off on say for example 15 16 hmm. for an entry level um executive as well or hmm. even for that matter you know an, a junior executive hmm. then as you you know that you stay at between 15 to about 25 hmm. for you know that there's a large group yeah. that's about say hmm. for example about 35 40% of your base sure. is at that uh you know between that group but the stars out of that hmm. go from 25 to 40 42 45 pretty quickly yeah, sure. as the, next, yeah as as the next jump got it then from 40 to get to between 80 to 1 crore again happens the stars out of that happens pretty pretty quickly so uh, somebody who's doing really well will get to 1 crore of salary in what like 7 8 years 7 8 years yeah okay yeah, 
we yeah, that. we've we've had those Lesser people. That, yeah. yeah, we've had those people. Wow. Okay. Uh, but the thing with our industry is because it's a creative industry, it's very visual. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's not people behind a computer who you hmm. don't know hmm. who's doing what. Hmm. In a meeting, hmm. you know who the star is. You hmm. know who's bringing what to the table. You know whose copy is flying. Hmm. You know whose input is is making a difference. You know who's winning the pitches. You know who's really killing it. So you know who's the Don Draper in the meeting. Hmm. Um, the Don Draper, yes, for sure. You do know. And then that person becomes very, very valuable because everyone else, hmm. um, you know, you can find other people to do that job mm, mm. the ones who who make the deal mm. who land that copy who land that ad who mm. land everything those mm. are the ones that that you keep yeah and then what happens is that and that's a more recent i'd say the last five years is that as the brand teams within organizations increased mm. initially the agency would have like uh, the agency would be the bigger team and yeah. there would be a smaller team yeah, within the, in the, brand team. the client yeah now they almost have mini agencies within mm. brand teams. Mm. So what you also see, someone works on an account long enough and the clients notice, okay, you're doing great work for me, great work for me. I'll hire you mm. and you get this massive bump and you just move to that side. Mm. Um, and then over time, you just go from brand to brand. Mm. And um, that's another jump that I've seen a lot of people do as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, the your if you choose to enter the advertising marketing industry, it's your you know your the, the length of your career doesn't necessarily have to just be in that industry yeah. right yeah. you you get to a certain stage mm. and you can work across multiple brands because you know how to run marketing for a brand mm. you get that mm. or you do really well in an agency and you're able to shine and and you continue to grow very quickly mm. um you know in a lot of these independent agencies actually allow you to mm. get to leadership positions very very quickly so there are multiple uh, sort of ways to to grow within the industry. And then within senior management and the CEO level, how much do they make? Um, I think it between anything between one point five to four would yeah. be uh, four crores a year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's maybe half a million dollars a year. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And but you guys got got to be working at a certain scale of yeah. of yeah. agency to be able to get to that now. And is there like a share of profit also that uh, some comp uh, some yes, agencies yes, have? Yes, of course. Uh, there sales are, teams, right? Yeah, mostly. Not just sales teams, but I mean, senior leaders do get, uh, you know, some sort of shares in large uh, yeah. ecosystems. They do. Yes. Yeah. And then there is bonus to go with it. And a large part of the, say, for example, the four crores is also based on company performance. Yeah. So you'll have about 35% of that actually coming to you in the form of bonus, yeah. um, you know, at the end of the year. Yeah. Basis how the company is done. You know, and then this, there's all of this and then there's what you guys did, right? Yeah. Which is you said, okay, let's start off on our own. Uh, how much, was there an economic incentive in doing that? You said because we will be much better off in terms of the money that we make. So therefore we should start Glitch or was that like something else around that? You'd be better to answer that. And then I'll take it from so, there. I never worked in advertising before starting mm -hmm. an agency. Um, really? Uh, yeah, I okay. worked. I was. Um, I started off in MTV. Um, mm -hmm. I used to um, work on. I worked across their content, you know, reality TV, Bollywood, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, moved to Channel V from there. Did mm -hmm. the same stuff there. You no, know, it was early days of reality TV, right? So like mm -hmm. my first job was doing research on roadies, and then mm -hmm. was everything else. Um, so we started Glitch. Uh, me and Rohit started off in 2009 mm -hmm. to be a production company. Mm -hmm. So we were a production company for the web. At a time when that wasn't really a thing, mm -hmm. but he wanted to work with brands, and because mm -hmm. both of us enjoyed doing stuff for brands, and so he used to direct, I used to produce. Mm -hmm. People could both edit. That mm -hmm. is literally the mm -hmm. company. Uh, mm -hmm. Two people in an apartment doing that. Um, but what we slowly realized, because we went in with a certain level of innovation and 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 and, and creative insight, mm -hmm. we fast became this merging of okay, let's add tech into content. Let's you know, make it an activation where video tech and everything else kind of comes together. Mm. We saw a lot of growth with that. We did a lot of stuff where, you know, where brands would turn us in one second, you're doing all the exciting, fun stuff. Mm. Um, can you also take care of, let's say, you know, our digital? Mm. Um, can you also have some insights on strategy? So we would do some of that stuff. But because neither of us came from that background and mm. Rohit and I were both in Channel V when we kids and mm. started, mm. we fast saw the need to have more of a strategic insight to build this into an agency. Mm. Because thing with production, at least when we started off, and I think it's still largely the case, is it's cyclical, right? Mm. It depends on, you know, you go from yeah. project to project. It's not yeah. a consistent source of revenue. Yeah. Um, and so we we 
build the agency part we were already had the production arm so you're moving higher value now yeah so because, because at that time we were doing tv production mm-hmm. we were doing large scale shows like coke studio etc we were doing um digital content and production we were also had an agency arm focused only on movies uh, to be, before movies got launched we mm-hmm. did movie promotions mm-hmm. and a small brand part which you saw as a great opportunity mm-hmm. and that's where she came in mm-hmm. uh Pooja came in and really kind of said, "Okay, one second. Uh, and we never had a CEO. Mm. Uh, Rohit and I were um, we were left brain and right brain, as mm. we called mm. it. Um, and so Pooja came in as our uh, came in to be our first CEO and kind of built the agency part. Mm. And over time, the production almost became a stack we add to the agency yeah. because we saw that as yeah. the way to grow. I'm going to let you fill some part of that so story. So I I I worked in an agency before. So mm. I was with JWT and some other big names. Mm. Um and when I met them mm. was actually not to work with them. Mm. Uh, I we met socially and mm. and um and I happened to need an agency mm. for the brand that I was working for at that time because I was working in marketing. And I saw these guys you know it was like a light bulb moment for me i was like i've got to work with them because mm. this is where the disruption is happening mm. so i picked up the phone on on rohit mm. um mm. and roshan actually and said that you know what i this is what you guys got right in that meeting and mm. these are things that did not work for you and uh, hire me mm. and i will show you how we can do so it so this is rohit raj and roshan abbas yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and um and they were like okay Varun, your friend clearly, yeah. uh, you know, is this is not a this is not what they expected from that call. Hmm. But I met with them and I I pitched them um, a, a thought, which hmm. is that I come with a certain kind of background. This is the kind of work that you do. These are the areas you need to fill in to really have an important seat at that table, hmm. and I will help you get there. Hmm. Now at that time it was a very small unit mm. and you know I was already a marketing manager and you know earning a certain remuneration etc I was like just give me half of what I make right now yeah. half of what I make in 2 months in those 2 months we'll see how it goes uh if I'm able to show you guys what this brand can actually be then we'll we'll sit across the table and talk about how uh you know this could all work out for us and they actually bet on me yeah. so it was 2 months and we went from we you know you got about 16 brands in those 2 months wow. we built um you know a strategic team we built a creative team and we built really strong business managers yeah. because that's the first step to being able to attract the right kind of business and really packaged our organization in a way that we were the new disruptors and uh did they give you the raise then after that like yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we i remember happened, that meeting yeah. where two months in and we just looked at the numbers and the numbers looked great yeah, yeah. and from then on it was always like that where i would go to them and say hey this is how we've done this is how much i want yeah because this is what we'd be able to do in the next year and that's how we grew and that's how our company Actually, there's also an it. insight in how you should pitch for your own compensation yeah. right Absolutely. like you back yourself and say yeah. that if i deliver this then i get this because you know that i i say this to a lot of young people that i meet with hmm. the strategy to get what you feel you deserve hmm. is to be able to convince yourself yeah. that hmm. you deserve that hmm. if you are convinced hmm. then when you sit across somebody hmm. to negotiate hmm. it doesn't become a negotiation it becomes a matter of fact hmm. right hmm. this is what i do hmm. this is what i can do because i have shown you what the last few months have potentially looked like yeah. you bet on me and this is what i will continue to do for you yeah. right and if you find someone who understands that magic happens yeah. because that's how we build That what makes we did sense. with glitch yeah that makes sense and also what ends up happening is that if you're clear about the fact that you can have an open dialogue about remuneration because a lot of us you'll have worried to say it yeah and when they actually go in and say it they say it sometimes like okay i've already quit and then i'm saying okay i thought i'll get like why didn't you talk about yeah. it yeah um or someone who comes in with unreal expectations and mm. you can also have to set them say one second you're expecting this mm. but look at the business you're working on look at what value is kind of generated look at it needs to make sense as well so yeah. we were always a culture where that was very open conversation yeah some people get it some people don't and you got to be also okay to the fact that not everyone's going to look at it that way yeah. someone's going to say no i want this much and then you saying it's not it doesn't work for the company it doesn't yeah. work for the company yeah but it's not something you should really hide yeah no i i i agree with you in fact you know one of the things that i learned from a a boss that i had worked with in the past is that he told me that if you 
want something you have to ask for yeah. it mm-hmm. right otherwise nobody will get the fact no one will guess it yeah i think the layer that you're adding puja to it is that rationalize it to yourself and then you yeah. go uh, because ask. there's a very small difference between arrogance and confidence yeah it's very very it's just it's very small yeah arrogance is when you go into it not really knowing hmm um and not really truly believing mm. but being arrogant about the fact that if you don't give this to me it's not going to work mm. confidence actually comes when you prove it to yourself yeah right you prove it to yourself because you have that track record yeah even if you've not built that track record mm. you make sure that you invest a certain amount of time to build mm. some form of track for yourself yeah that's when you negotiate yeah that's when there is power in that discussion yeah. because otherwise it's like every way with there are no facts on the table yeah yeah no. and I, what also ends up happening is sometimes those discussions become not just about the remuneration yeah. mm-hmm. if someone's really thought it through it becomes about an opportunity like yeah at glitch we always had and i think we continue to do that even now with what we build yes. mm-hmm. is that you start off with a certain thought process mm-hmm. as the people who started it and then over time there are people who are part of your team who see opportunities which maybe you are not focusing on mm-hmm. and say maybe we should do this mm-hmm. you turn to them saying okay can you build it yeah. let's discuss it you come back with a plan yeah We'll figure a way for you to drive that, for you to lead it. What resources do you need? Let's make a plan and see how that makes sense. Mm. That also drives ownership. So yeah. that person is one thing. I didn't just come up with the idea and they did it. Yeah, I built it. Yeah. So you almost are building people with a certain entrepreneurial mindset internally, and that's okay. what we had at Glitch, and that's what we've continued to do with whatever we've done. Is that it's got to become your own. Yeah. Because then your your investment in it is far more, and then your experience is far richer as well. So even if tomorrow you want to say, okay, I'm going to move on from this. you coming on saying once again i built this entire revenue mm. stream or i built mm. this entire product or i built this entire like you know sub unit mm. and that experience is just invaluable yeah and it, it's not about being a founder but more the founder mindset exactly. right like so it's a employee mindset versus an entrepreneurial mindset we yeah. talk about that a lot yeah. with our colleagues and we've been doing that for years mm. and you know there's an argument there that but you know i don't make what you would make mm. when say for example you get acquired mm. and that's true mm. but it's not always about the money mm. and i'll explain further is that the experience you gain mm. in a setup where you are not necessarily the entrepreneur but mm. have that mindset mm. allows you to go out and and really build something for yourself one yeah. number two you have that entrepreneurial mindset the real entrepreneur goes and say i want that guy i'm going to give that person yeah. a share of the pie as well yeah. right yeah. there are two ways to look at it yeah. because every experience is valuable the the intent of the opposite person and the opposite person's attitude is super critical to it as well mm. that's where success happens everyone doesn't come up with an idea to start a company yeah. that's not how it works yeah. but that doesn't mean that the only the entrepreneur is valuable yeah. an entrepreneur can do nothing if they don't have the right kind of people around him or her to be able to re- to build an organization that is very valuable too yeah i didn't start glitch yeah right Yeah. but i was an extremely valuable member of glitch mm. right i built that opportunity for myself mm. so when i went out and said that hey we're going to start another company together mm. i take all of that yeah and put it in my own company no absolutely in fact you look at so many founders who got who found it very easy to raise capital yeah has happened because they are what is called 2x founder and 2x mm. founder doesn't mean that they this is the second time they're starting a company yeah. but they're second time they're running something that they yes. they're going to build themselves right yeah. and i i think it speaks a lot about the person that if they took on an opportunity within a company and built something and then going out and saying that oh, hey look i this is what i did and therefore i need to be funded and you know we faced that when we started talking to potential investors for our new company hmm. in a really bad market hmm. yeah um the conversation was never on capability yeah right because we, if you are running it yeah you're going to be able, you're going to make something out of that company yeah. right yeah. that that comes in yeah and You know, I say that as a as a much older person today, and I definitely wasn't feeling this way when I was in my twenties. So, mm. like, I mean, if you guys in your twenties are not feeling it, it's fine, right? Mm. You do learn with experience. But what I would tell m- my younger self is that the bets that I took on myself, mm. 
the opportunities I said yes to, even though they didn't pay me enough, mm-hmm. yeah. did pay off. Yeah. And that's something that, that's a relationship you need to have with your own self. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not always about the money, but you have to be smart about it. Yeah. If it's not money, then it has to be something as valuable. Yeah. And as long as you find that yeah. you, and yeah. are able to, you know, see a few steps ahead, yeah. because that's critical. Yeah. Seeing a few steps ahead. Um, and also being able sense. to, I guess, articulate that to the yeah. other person. Right? Yes. That, that's yes. important. I was, uh, I was smiling when she said younger self, right? Is that so my first job out of college was 17,000 rupees a month. Um, I quit that job in one week to go for a job that was 12,000 rupees a month. <laughs> and then I quit that job a year later and went for a job that was 13,000 rupees a month. Right. Which eventually raised up, came up to twenty. 5,000 rupees a month by the end of four years of working in television. And that's when I started Glitch. So my salary when I started off Glitch till then had only grown that much. But till date, yeah, as of even yesterday, the stuff I learned in those four years is what I have used through my entire career. Yeah. yeah. So that set me up skill set wise, process, understanding everything, for just four years in television have just set me up for every single yeah, thing I did. That, those four years taught you when you got paid for it, whatever you got paid. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the interesting part is like once you start a company and you have senior folks uh, coming on board, how how did you decide the ownership of the company? Because it was started with, I guess, Rohit and yourself yeah. and then more folks came in. How did you say that, okay, this equity, this much percentage should go to this person? So we had a pretty straightforward equity structure. Um, there was Rohit, me and Roshan was our first investor. What we saw this as, and we never saw this as a company we're building to sell. Mm. Um, so for us, it was always a remuneration conversation and never mm-hmm. an equity conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and we always made sure that anybody who's senior got, got paid a certain amount of money. And the, the standing joke was that both of us would look at everybody's remuneration, mm. see what's left and see how much we both take. Mm. Um, so mm-hmm. that is literally how we built it over the years. And, um, I remember there's a point when Pooja would turn around to both of us and say, guys, you got to pay yourselves mm-hmm. some form of this thing as well. And that would mm-hmm. come in. So when we actually started to have conversations on being acquired, and mm-hmm. those those went through for a few years. It was also sitting down saying, one second, one is distributing equity. Mm-hmm. But you also look at how much, because you start to understand terms like, so if you give someone equity and they gain something from it, how much are they going to lose out of, you know, the fact that they can't even invest it somewhere else. So, sure. yeah. And so we gauged it from how much value can we give mm. individuals. And so when we finally did the sale, we a lot of the conversations were about how rest of senior management was going to get remunerated rather than giving them equity in that. Because advertising acquisitions are different from how... Sure. You want they, those folks to continue for a bit. Want them to continue. You also want to make sure they're making enough money in their pockets mm. and so that's how we looked at it mm. uh, everyone looks at it differently but that's how we and looked up at until it. the time that uh, i think group m was talking about acquiring you guys mm. the equity ownership was primarily the three of us yeah. and and we had a fourth partner who had a certain amount because our daily office was run by kabir sure. and so kabir had a, had a smaller set in the company for running that operation right so when uh, did group m approach you guys or you guys thought that okay this is now the time of life no, to do you know this? we were actually mm-hmm. when the whole conversation happened we were like why would we even do that yeah because right? okay. we were profitable mm. we had some of the biggest brands working with us we were on a great trajectory mm. we didn't even know an acquisition was possible mm. so for two years i mean we were we, we were like on dates mm. with yeah. global ceos mm. of every major organization who would fly down to bombay mm. and take the three us out, three of us out to dinner mm. And they were pitching to us why we sh- why we would fit in their network. Mm. Every major media company's global CEO did that with us. Mm. We were we never approached them. Mm. But when that happened, because we are opportunity spotters in the most positive manner, we actually sat down and said that if we were to get this scale, what could our talent then do? What could that what could that mean for us for our organization most importantly for our people Mm. and eventually what we would actually then be able to take to our clients which would make the entire offering we have so much more powerful so it was a strategic move it obviously paid off financially for all of us 
because there was ownership, etc. And the way uh, advertising acquisitions work, it's not about an infusement of money into the company, yeah. but largely what goes to shareholders and sure. sta- um, you sure. know equity holders. So uh, it made a lot of sense for us at that time uh, when when we evaluated it. But did you do the math around, okay, that this is the amount of money that we are going to get. Let's say that number is, say, 100. And on that 100, I'll make 10%, which is 10, say, 10 crores a year. Yeah. Uh, versus to earn that same amount of money, the kind of effort and time I have of to course. put in. Of yeah. course. We did a lot of yeah, that. Yeah, we did a lot of that. <laughs> We've, and, and also because the, I mean, just because of how the acquisitions happen, the number of equations and permutations and combinations think about okay fun how much you get in year one upfront mm. versus how much you'll get as a bumper towards the end what is the because it's a multiple right mm. so how, how are the multiples flowing from year one to you know year five because there's generally a five-year earnout mm. um and so we had to compare a bunch of the deals and figure out on one end figure out what deal made the most sense for wealth generation mm-hmm. but also what deal made the most sense from just the company scaling and for our people to be secure and we had sure. to balance those two out sure so I feel that took a while for us. I think that was a good one year of yeah. like the dates and then figuring out what the dates meant. Yes. Um, and um, and then once we locked it in, then we knew what you we were working towards. And uh, and we did that for a balance. So we actually, that was, and thankfully for us, it was the best uh, money-wise value. Mm-hmm. And also was the best fit for us in terms of a network, which is WPP. Yeah. Uh, and the culture yeah. of that company yeah. and everything else that, uh, it bought with it for yeah. sure. Yeah, interesting. And you know, how does the investing life change after this event happens? Like, mm-hmm. how what were you do- guys doing with your portfolio or your surplus funds mm-hmm. right up till the point that the glitch transaction happened? Because you were profitable, you were paying yourself, yeah. yeah. So you were making enough money to have something yes, on the investment side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that we we two different people, Very different, even though yeah. we are a couple. Yeah. yeah, I've been investing since I was making five thousand rupees. Okay, so I, I've like put aside a certain amount of my money since I was very young and then invested in property and etc. That's just my background. That's how he, on the other hand, was nothing. free um, willing. <laughs> zero investments for the longest time. I was that person who was given a free credit card and forgot I'd made a transaction and eventually had to pay mm-hmm. something because I had forgotten that was just getting more and more interest into it. So I came from that because my focus always makes salary... You keep something running, go on. And once you start becoming, start building a company, you're like, okay, whatever you can put back in, you put back into the company is mm. what I always functioned mm. as. I think towards like the fifth, sixth year of Glitch, just before we got acquired, I'd start to put certain amount. I think we, we were with a bank and the person said, okay, well, at least do something, do mm. an SIP, mm. right? So I did a few SIPs, which thankfully did quite well. Mm. Um, um, and this is when the, when the US, um, uh, Stocks were doing well and you could invest from here and yeah, yeah. Um, which I thankfully exited right before the whole the crash um, happened. Thing, thing happened, right? So um, I was a very late, um, I would say, uh, I was very late into investing on, in my own personal fund. So it's always about put back in the company, we'll figure it out sure. um, and just reinvest into that as a business. But when this event happened is when I feel that uh, we had to have, we had a chat about how we're yeah. aligning both philosophies in terms of um, how because we invest. Because when... Because I would in I was uh, saving and investing since I was very young, mm-hmm. and I my focus was that I had to because there was no generational wealth coming my way, mm. so whatever I had to do was something I had to do. So sure. I was building my own generational wealth because yeah, that's yeah, how it was, yeah. right? And I wanted to own a house, and I wanted to have you know all of the 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 aspects that go with adulting, mm. um, and that's what I started doing. I I would make a chunk, and then I would invest it in a property, mm. and I would sell that property, and because that's that made sense twenty years ago, yeah, right? Yeah. When I was doing it and um, and then eventually you know bought a home and uh, use that money to invest in something else for example or invest in other companies my my uh, my aspect even if you have 500 rupees find a way to use it well hmm. right and invest in the right people or most often bet on myself sure so my strategy largely has been to bet on myself and sort of take it from and there then so when this uh, when this happened, money came and I'm then, always a person who's sick I would rather have money in the bank yeah then put just it, lying put there. it anywhere yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm okay to have the safety you won't make a good financial influence no right? so like <laughs> it's not I don't happening do right? no, I was I'm no longer yeah. but I was that person so, I, for me it's always like it's that mixture of Varun know, is actually like the baby shark 
okay? okay. He is I he's actually this. very smart as an investor because oh. I have seen thankfully with our 10 years of marriage that uh, you know he's managed it really well, but he just uh, he will not he may not be able to put it out there in the way that uh, you know a financially affluent uh, you know yeah, uh, like a, like uh, a finance influencer uh, would. an influencer would, but I have seen the bets that he has made and how that has potential yeah. that has potentially paid out for us and for our family yeah. but when the deal happened we were very sure that um, there's a you know there are certain people who are very who are who are experts hmm. even though they are they don't come from that particular background and really have the understanding of where to invest and how to use it hmm. we didn't necessarily have that hmm. Hmm. and we just looked to experts hmm. that was a that was a marriage of sorts as well right because hmm. once the deal yeah. happened suddenly we were getting quoted yeah. because yes. we suddenly had money yeah, yeah so we yeah. actually looked to experts and then and built our vocabulary very very quickly mm. and started understanding how our money was working and how we needed to make it grow yeah. and you know when you have money mm. that's when you start learning more about money sure and you realize that you just need that little bit mm. to make that lot yeah and we made that little bit and then we would then just focus on how do we get that to a lot yeah and the last 5 6 years for us has really been that yeah and you bought this house uh, at we that bought, point yeah we bought the house mm. we bought another house we bought a couple of homes you know we invested that in a mm. way to help us with everything that you know advisor said that we would do mm. and we backed a lot of other companies and we then invested in equity which mm-hmm. was which is yeah. a, which is a good way for us yeah. to go because we always So I think the, the 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 good part of the combination of how we both think, and I think it it brings a balanced approach, is that um, Pooja is great at spotting immediate actionable um, things. Mm-hmm. I'm a very like I can play really slow, long game of mm-hmm. things to make X amount of money in like eight years. Be totally patient with how that kind of goes, sure. um, and really say I'll, I'll you know we we'll hold this one out mm-hmm. and do it. And I think the combination of two often, and when we sit on. Um, on our money and how we invest that really plays out well and that's how we look at it by playing the long game but also play on stability play the long game and have stuff you know are going to have immediate payouts in the short term um and that's what i but think but do you have times when you're like okay there's a different view point on a certain pool of money yeah uh, how do you reconcile that like yeah. how do you say okay who who pulls the trigger then i mean we both have the ability to do it ourselves yeah. uh that's how we you know that's how we function um there's a if there's a bet that he really believes that he should take and i don't agree with it mm. he has the agency to do it and vice mm. versa mm. right mm. but we're also accountable to each other yeah uh in that sense mm. as a couple yeah. because we bring the equal amount to the table mm. so we take the equal amount of risk and mm. we also have the equal amount of agency to be able to operate how we mm. sometimes we fail but sometimes we do really well yeah and we learn from that and uh, and a lot of those bets end up being especially in the angel investing space yeah. because sometimes yeah. you're taking a bet on a startup and and that's I, that's where i feel that there's a lot more conversation i feel the fundamentals how we look at investing in, let's say be it in equity be it in markets everything else i think that will largely align yeah i think the only part of real estate is is this a startup we really want to kind of go into and um because yeah. we also both come from very different experiences in terms of skill set so i'll see something in a startup i'm saying like from my learning this might make sense and she'll come and say no what about this and and that's where i think both of us as angel investors have such interestingly different portfolios yeah, of companies yeah sure I think the interesting part is you guys will be getting access to some of the best uh, deals right out yes. there which is hard for a lot of people the problem of plenty would be very high in your yeah. case in terms of deal flow and then yes. sele- figuring out like which deals to say no to yeah. because you're probably saying that okay here's a certain percentage of money which I want to risk yes uh, and because these are zero or one kind of yeah. outcomes right yeah so um we actually did that for ourselves a few years ago hmm. and we kind of like put down our broad principles of the kind of people that we would like to back mm. um mm. what because we had the fortune to make a certain amount of wealth for ourselves how were we going to you know in a sense pay it forward is very weak mm. but we play an active role mm. in the entrepreneurial landscape of our country mm. in whatever way we could because mm. even if it's 1 rupee mm. 
that has value, mm. right? And so we set up a company called Seat at the Table, mm. which is our home office. Mm -hmm. And that home office invests with a certain purpose. Mm -hmm. So there is diversity, which is a huge aspect mm -hmm. to it. The second aspect is the kind of impact that organization will have either in our own society, mm -hmm. um, in our country, and generally the world at large. Mm -hmm. right? So we were very clear about that it has to tick a few boxes for us to say yes to it. Mm. And we stuck by that, mm. actually, over the last couple of years with the many deals that we've done. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we've really stuck by that. We look for for diversity in the cap table mm. and, you know, in the founder set. That's not just in gender, mm. but, you know, be it religion, be it background, mm. education, etc. All of that. Mm. Um, and we've we found some success, actually, yeah. in that aspect. That's how we looked at it, that I secure a certain part of it and he sets up the future. Yeah. Uh, and that all happens because when you are a team, um, it's not just about what one person needs. It's about yeah. what the team needs. And then we take care of the individual as well and then look at the family at large. Uh, Pooja, now for you, like, you know, you're running Glitch. Glitch has now been acquired. And how does it feel to be then CEO of a company that is actually not fully owned by you? <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a difference. And... Um, but, you know, there is opportunity when, uh, because for me, I look at every day as an experience. Mm -hmm. And the experience that I was gaining there, even though we were no longer shareholders, is that I was working a really large setup. Mm -hmm. And I had was had the privilege of actually integrating the company, integrating Glitch mm -hmm. with a larger network and then leading that network. Mm -hmm. right? There are a few things that it gave me. Number one, uh, I was able to secure our people mm -hmm. and was, you know, they all were in a position where their value was understood and mm -hmm. then could play a larger role within the network. Mm -hmm. For me, I was taking everything that we were doing in a small spot in Andheri mm -hmm. to a global stage, sure. right? It was incredible. Yeah. Uh, the experience of running and integrating a large organization and then making that profitable was, yeah. was not something that I would get. Yeah in a university, yeah, right? And it yeah. was an experience that I didn't want to let go of. Mm. Um, so yes, it did feel like, um, hey, you know, I, we don't own it 100%, mm. Mm. but I'm a person that operates with an entrepreneurial mindset mm. in whatever I'm doing because mm. there is an opportunity in everything and in the most positive manner. Yeah. So I, I kind of looked at it like that. And in this time, did you renegotiate your compensation? Yeah, of course. hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. So what multiple did it go up by? Uh, it went up by, uh, I think, two and a half X. So after the after it got acquired? Yeah. After the acquisition was almost complete. Got yeah. it. I, we, we went. At I the went end of the five year period. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Now, coming back again, where you're, uh, you're out of glitch. Yes. Uh, you're you have on this content creator journey yeah. and now you're building a new company yes. right yeah. uh, when it came to like thinking about how much money does this company need at which point did you think that okay this much money we will put in and this much we will raise from outside yeah. or was it like first let's raise from outside and balance we'll show up so, you know that has been a journey in itself yeah. because it's been a learning experience for us uh, because with Glitch, we never necessarily needed to raise money because in a sense it was, you know, the service industry is, so, mm. uh, you know, it almost self-funds itself, right? Yeah. And you don't, ne you don't necessarily need outside investment to sure. scale. Sure. Um, unlike what we, uh, so we didn't really have the experience mm. of being in the startup and uh, mm. venture capitalist sort of ecosystem. Sure. Uh, outside of being angel investors ourselves, because sure. it was completely different from VC investing, right? Um, so our first step was, yeah, yeah, of course we should, because funds reached out to us. Mm. The moment they knew that we had exited Glitch, funds reached out to us, what are you guys doing next? And we, mm. we want to meet. Mm. We're like, okay, cool. I mean, that seems like, you know, everyone seems to say that that's, that's a difficult aspect. Mm. People are reaching out to us. Let's make the most of this opportunity. Mm. And we told ourselves that we only want to speak to a few funds. Mm. We needed to understand mm. how that world worked. 
Sure. Um, we didn't want to be um, arrogant about the opportunity we were given, which mm. was to even get that meeting because that's so difficult for so many people. Yeah. To even you get. have to be respectful of the. T- Absolutely. Yeah. Respectful of their time that yeah. they were offering to us. Sure. So we did put in the effort. Mm. We we built an or we you know we built that entire investment presentation. We built the entire business plan. Mm. It was very different from what we uh, what we would have otherwise done. Mm. But we still went ahead and did that out of respect for the opportunity we were being given. Mm. And we were able, we, you know, it was, not, let's just say that it was, uh, you know, it was, it's a completely different environment that mm. we were operating in. So mm. while we did get that meeting, mm. it took us a few meetings, which is about four meetings to get a commitment Mm. from and we did mm. and we got commitments from you know of, angels uh, from as well. angels as well as from a fund mm. but then we looked at what we were building and it was about 15 steps away from what we actually wanted to build mm. right because we were tailor making mm. for what would get invested mm. and you know as as i said mm. Varun and i are partners right and mm. we we're very core to our principles of why we do what we do and how we spend our time mm. because what is the point of building wealth for yourself mm. if you have no control over your time and mm. how you spend it mm. that was why we exited corporate lives yeah so we came back to that, which is what we, we're very good at that. We, you know, we pull ourselves and back get ourselves into that, into, okay, why are we doing what we're doing? Mm. And it, uh, going the VC route didn't satisfy us, mm. even though we were getting that money. We didn't feel good about it because we were losing control of our time. Mm. We went back into a golden handcuff, which we had just gotten out of. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it would take away from how we wanted to build it, the pace at which we wanted to build it and um, why we wanted to build it. All of it sort of went a bit disarray. So we decided yet again that we're going to bet on ourselves. And that's what we're going to do. And we're just going to bet on ourselves and we're going to get that, we're going to get product market fit and then decide if we even raise them and need the money and then go out and raise. So, so we actually how. picked up the phone and called the VC and yes. said, thank you, but no, thank you. Yes. Because, you know, uh, fundraisers happen in momentum. Yes. Like yes. when it's going on, it just happened it like just that. happens and then you're moving to legal agreements, you yeah. suddenly and the money's in the bank. So we actually got an email uh, from a very, you know, just out of respect, I don't want to name it. Uh, and I looked at it and I looked at Warren and I said, shit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this has actually happened and we will have to take their money. And, uh, and we looked at each other and said, how are you feeling about it? Uh-huh. And we didn't feel good. So we respect, we took a couple of days, by the way, yeah, we slept on it. We slept on it because we didn't want to take long term mm-hmm. decisions on short term emotions. Sure. Um, and but we felt the same thing the next morning and the morning after that. And we knew that respectfully, we had to not, you know, keep keep this yeah. going. So we actually told them the reasons for why we didn't want to take the money right now. Uh, we also called up every angel who had given us uh, their commitment and explain to them why we didn't want to take their money and in uh, full honesty it was such a great experience because they got it yeah. they understood why we didn't want to take the money and uh, they understood that why we wanted to do it the way we mm. wanted to sort of run it and uh, you know that's the thing right mm. you bet on yourself and then um, yeah yeah, so because, how, yeah sorry so because because also wealth generation isn't just like what Pooja, it's not about just generating wealth mm. Um, it's about generating all the parts that you should think about as well. It's, it's mm. about control over your time. Mm. It's about control about how you do things. How mm. much how much are you giving away versus how much do you have in your hands? And we mm. saw that if we did it the way we originally set out to do it, mm. versus how we were kind of moving away from it slightly uh, as we went through the pitches, mm. like we knew that in the long term, mm. that would actually hold more yeah. value and weight. Um, then looking at saying one second, what is the market really investing in right now versus mm. what do we believe yeah. you know, can be the market we create tomorrow? Mm. And we said, let's just let's bet on that. Yeah. And uh, because we have the privilege of having had one exit before and having the ability to do that, if we don't do it, then what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, you know, a lot of companies and businesses that we meet. Uh, there's this whole discussion of whether this business is VC fundable or yeah. not, right? Yeah. And 
the moment somebody says that this business is not vc fundable it almost seems like a negative thing right mm. and then we do see founders and entrepreneurs trying to say okay then how do i make it vc yeah, fundable yeah. and that's not the point the point yes. is there are certain businesses inherently yes. not suited or certain styles of building a business not suited for yes uh, external capital yes absolutely and and understanding that is very critical that is not a negative yeah uh it just means that you need to go about it in a completely different way and there are different solutions to it uh you don't have to just go to a vc you can get angels to back you right because mm. they look at it differently uh you could look at it from a business loan aspect because yeah. you know that revenue is revenue based financing yeah. revenue based financing yeah. which is which is also a very good way to look at it mm. and also to look at friends and family and yeah. see if there is something that you could get out of that yeah. and invest in your business but what you need to have in all of this is acumen mm. it's not just about starting a business mm. the essential purpose of starting a business to generate profit yeah yeah that is the essential that's yeah. why your business is run yeah. right yeah. to generate profit how soon will you be profitable yeah understand that part yeah. and then you know how much you need to put in yeah. and suddenly you don't need a million dollars to mm. set up a company that could potentially be a 200 crore company over 3 to 4 years yeah. you just need say 50 lakhs yeah and that 50 lakhs suddenly coming from 10 angels is not yeah that difficult yeah. anymore yeah. at least right yeah. Yeah. um and you ha- you look at it like that no and you know vc capital is the most expensive capital that you can raise because you need to deliver back mm. a much more higher return yes. right yes. and therefore you're ending up taking significant risk in the yes. uh, in the in the portfolio a uh, risk and uh, one is the 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 business aspect of it the human aspect of it is the how stretched you will be from a time standpoint uh everything else that you will have to say no to because you said yes to this yeah. um so there's 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 a lot it also depends on how you want to live your life yeah. right but sorry uh, also how we look at building businesses because of our past experience mm. is an interesting differentiator is that we you know when we build glitch we build glitch in a way that you are creating stacks you're creating almost like a platform saying you can build multiple things off mm. this mm. so you know we had we had a production stack where we built an agency on top of it eventually became a, we had consulting kind of come in had tech come in all that stuff even now after building is we building a fund like almost like a foundational stack mm. which mm. can actually re- kind of create multiple brands multiple of sets it. of products mm. everything else and so and that requires a very different way of structuring and functioning yeah. mm. it also requires you to have that you know clarity of saying one second this is the core and this is all the stuff you could create but you don't have to create all of them today mm-hmm. like you know you mm-hmm. create them you mm-hmm. paste it out and do it so mm-hmm. and that's also like you said the different businesses function and 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 are set up differently and and for us this is core to how we create so what percentage of your financial wealth are you putting aside for the new business we looking at i you know about 10% of it even lesser than that actually we yeah. and that too over a period of time and it, all of that doesn't go into the business some yeah. of it goes into our life yeah. right to live the way we want to live yeah uh, till the time the business can start paying us a certain remuneration yeah. which so we is. look yeah which it already is mm. and it's not even been a year of, of us looking at this seriously mm. because i only left in december mm. uh so which over the, and then, i left in august and he left in august and mm. then we took a few months off to do nothing mm. uh so we've really seriously been looking at looked at it as a business since since april mm. and so april to now we've already made it uh, uh you know we there's a considerable amount of revenue that we've been able to bring in mm. because we traditionally know how to mm. how to monetize something mm. right and which is what you need to look at as well mm. you know as your own skill set what are you really good at mm. um where you take that skill mm. into which company you take it mm. uh your core skill to, my core skill is to be able to monetize i can mo- that's what i've done for my entire career sure and that's what we looked at sure. what are the elements that we can monetize through what we're currently building what are the new areas that we have never ventured into before and mm. we want to experiment with mm. that's what this new company is mm. there's a part that we know how to do which mm. is to build content that's mm. what we've done for 20 years mm. we know how to build community that's mm. how we've done for a very long time what have we not built before we've not built product mm. but first let's get the content and community in place mm. right as always get our distribution in place mm. now we're getting in, we're now in the product phase mm. our products will be out in the market in the next few months we mm. already know because we have built 
some of the biggest digital first businesses in our country and even you know in different parts of the world we know how product marketing can also add largely to your to your bottom line very very quickly mm. build your roas in a way that um, you know is lucrative to you mm. make sure your customer acquisition cost stays a certain way because you've built you focused on content and community mm. You, know, you sort of look at it very systematically yeah. as yeah. as you would look at any business if VCs were not available yeah. to you. Yeah. No, I think that's interesting. From the looks of it, it seems like if you have hundred rupees and the returns that this capital is giving you, that is the amount of money that's going back into the business. Yes. Uh, and in a way, therefore, your core capital stays in, intact. So the you know one question we ask everyone is that uh, do you really feel wealthy? Mm. Do you feel that you have enough money and You know, everyone has a different assumption of what wealth is. How do you guys feel about it? Um, we wake up in the morning and say, "Do we have full control of our day? We're wealthy." Yeah. Right. That's how we look at it. Can we sleep a full night? We feel wealthy. But that has come at a stage where we have wealth. Hmm. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, I understand that reality. Hmm. Hmm. But uh, to get to where we were, hmm. where we are today. a lot went into it hmm. right we we had a certain number in our mind hmm. um which has you know that that goal kept changing over the years and it, thankfully we you know hmm. we are somewhere close to it right now but we know that we when we have that amount hmm. get, making that amount a large amount hmm. is a matter of a certain amount of time right of how of playing the market and investing in the right ways and also investing in yourself hmm. but uh, pointedly asking your answering your question yeah we do feel wealthy because we have yeah. full control of our time and it's not about the amount of money that you have in the bank it's not right so look at look at your day look at your week right it's split across three things there's this time for work this time for life and this time for self mm. um time for self is what you have most control over mm. time for life is a little flexible because mm. it's still family friends all that stuff and time for work is where you actually have the least amount of control because mm. always there's variables of everything external else. Really so when you start off like i'd say like 20s onwards is a lot more about work so less mm. control and mm. over time the the point of wealth generation the way mm. you look at it is that you got to start building towards that so mm. 20s to 30s you suddenly have a little bit more you know family takes over more time again that gives you more control there um over time you also have to invest in self which is something mm. which none of us invest in mm. as much but over time you realize the value of it mm. so now we look at it say one second we have a lot more mm. and you can build that balance in and the wealth is what allows you to live your life hmm. Hmm. it's not what is driving your life yeah and you always have to have that lens on or saying okay is it allowing you to do things you want to do is it allowing you to live the way you want to live is it working enough in the background where you are not hands on day to day just to make that happen hmm. um that is also true wealth right it's, yeah. it's that mixture of of all these things together yeah. um is what rather how we look at wealth is my standing joke is that my dream car was a honda city i got that years ago i've not mm -hmm. had a dream car since then so those are not the dreams we go after we go after experiences you got to go after life we go mm -hmm. after things like that and that's what we kind of stick to you know because we learned when i got that big job or when that big check hit our account that happiness honestly lasted momentarily for mm -hmm. us yeah and with age we've understood that mm -hmm. it's all very valuable mm. so we are now we we understand that and yeah. we're not arrogant about it yeah. we feel good that we had it mm. but we know that that's not all we have to chase and that has come with our own experience and we also recognize that that's not how everybody looks at it but mm. this is our own life right mm. we don't live for the community we live for ourselves mm. um so we were very clear about what would make us feel wealthy but after this money came was there like something that you did mm. uh, how like that changed was it how you traveled where you traveled to what you spend money on you said you're not into cars but then is it your jewelry or what yeah, what changed yeah you know for us i think the basic was we wanted to buy our home and we built a beautiful home, home for, for us ourselves mm -hmm. we really got a really good home mm. uh it's a nice big space for both our kids and for us um that was important to us mm. so we did that So that was a splurge. That was a splurge. Yeah. We mm. got, you know, home for my mom who lives mm. like right next door, etc. Uh outside of that was you know, we would because we Glitch was still a lucrative company even mm. when we were we didn't have the earn out. We were still traveling very well and mm. we were still doing all of that. Um but a a large part that changed is that we is is truly back at the time. Mm. Because we were so busy 
always busy hmm. and we never had time hmm. and hmm. we just kept saying that we just don't have the time to do anything hmm. today we feel wealthy because we have time to really enjoy our wealth yeah. right yeah. and that's when you feel wealthy because what's the point of the money in the bank if you yeah. don't have time yeah, to enjoy sense. it yeah. and also so. not be not be penny wise and and oh. don't foolish right is that because of times you think oh, let me cut on this smaller thing and that's oh. not really going to become yeah, you know yeah. something you look at um you look at saying you know when you're traveling travel well mm. um when you're having experiences as a family as individuals let's not well, let's not kind of go on that mm. I, someone asked me sometime recently saying what is the biggest purchase that you expensive purchase you made that you regret mm. and i realized it was a pair of sneakers i bought for 20000 rupees <laughs> that is literally the most expensive thing i have bought that I regret and that show i think pujas will be similar to that if not Uh, I don't regret I, I don't, anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just that you got you got to look at it saying you know you're not buying things for show yeah. you're not buying things to splurge but you're investing to experiences investing sure. into living our lives uh, when the money hit the bank after mm. the uh, the first chunk of money hit the bank when we did that deal I took a screenshot we both looked at that screenshot went back to work and yes. went to that living <laughs> nothing changed yeah right? nothing changed also yeah, and so and and that's the way to look at it you yeah. shouldn't let that take over how you live your life yeah because then you're setting a benchmark which should not be what you follow yeah. the benchmark you should set is saying are you living your life the way you want to live your life yeah. and as long as this is aiding that nothing else uh, matters great guys thank you so much this is an amazing This is the first time we've had a, a couple on. The, uh, first time we've had two people on a podcast, let alone a couple. 